Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. In this channel, we will share you useful and reliable information about pregnancy and parenting. Today, we will talk about a very serious and heartbreaking topic, stillbirth. Stillbirth is the death of a baby at or after the 20th week of pregnancy. It can happen before, during, or after labor. In this video, we will discuss six signs of fetal death in the womb and how to prevent it. Before we begin, Please note that this video is for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. If you have any concerns about your pregnancy, please consult your doctor or midwife immediately. Let's get started. Six signs of fetal death in the womb. Number one, reduced or absent fetal movement. One of the most common signs of fetal death in the womb is reduced or absent fetal movement. You may notice that your baby is not kicking, moving, or responding to your touch as much as before. This can happen because the baby is not getting enough oxygen or nutrients from the placenta, or because the baby has a problem with its heart or nervous system. To monitor your baby's movement, you can do a kick count at least once a day, especially in the third trimester. To do a kick count, lie down on your left side and count how many times your baby moves in one hour. You should feel at least 10 movements in an hour. If you feel less than 10 movements, or if you notice a sudden change in your baby's movement pattern, call your doctor or midwife right away. They may perform a fetal monitoring or an ultrasound to check your baby's heartbeat and well-being. Number two, vaginal bleeding or leaking fluid. Another sign of fetal death in the womb is vaginal bleeding or leaking fluid. This can happen because of a problem with the placenta, such as placental abruption, where the placenta separates from the wall of the uterus, or placenta previa, where the placenta covers the opening of the cervix. These conditions can cause heavy bleeding and deprive the baby of oxygen and nutrients. They can also increase the risk of infection and preterm labor. If you notice any bleeding or leaking fluid from your vagina, do not ignore it. Contact your doctor or midwife immediately. They may examine you and perform tests to determine the cause and severity of the bleeding or leaking. They may also give you medication or perform a procedure to stop the bleeding or leaking and protect your baby. Number three, severe abdominal or back pain. Severe abdominal or back pain can also be a sign of fetal death in the womb. This can happen because of a uterine rupture, where the uterus tears open, or a cord prolapse, where the umbilical cord slips out of the cervix before the baby. These are rare but life-threatening complications that can cause severe bleeding and cut off the blood supply to the baby. If you experience any sudden or intense pain in your abdomen or back, do not wait. Call your doctor or midwife immediately. They may perform an emergency cesarean delivery to save your baby and your life. Number four, fever or chills. Fever or chills can also indicate fetal death in the womb. This can happen because of an infection in the uterus, the placenta, or the amniotic fluid. Infection can cause inflammation and damage to the tissues and organs of the mother and the baby. It can also trigger preterm labor and delivery. If you have a fever of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees C or higher, or if you feel cold and shivery, contact your doctor or midwife as soon as possible. They may prescribe antibiotics or other treatments to fight the infection and prevent complications. Number five, no weight gain or loss of weight. No weight gain or loss of weight can also suggest fetal death in the womb. This can happen because of a condition called intrauterine growth restriction, IUGR, where the baby does not grow as expected in the womb. This can be caused by various factors, such as chromosomal abnormalities, genetic disorders, maternal diseases, poor nutrition, smoking, alcohol, or drug use. IUGR can affect the development and function of the baby's organs and increase the risk of stillbirth, especially in the third trimester. If you notice that you are not gaining weight or that you are losing weight during your pregnancy, talk to your doctor or midwife. They may measure your fundal height which is the distance from the top of your uterus to your pubic bone, and compare it with the expected growth for your gestational age. They may also perform an ultrasound to measure your baby's size and weight and check for any abnormalities. They may recommend dietary changes, supplements, or medications to improve your baby's growth and health. Number six, loss of pregnancy. Symptoms. 
loss of pregnancy. Symptoms can also be a sign of fetal death in the womb. This can happen because of a hormonal imbalance or a drop in the levels of human chorionic gonadotropin, HCG, the hormone that supports the pregnancy. You may notice that your breasts are no longer tender or swollen, that your nausea or vomiting has stopped, or that your fatigue or mood swings have improved. However, these symptoms can also vary naturally throughout the pregnancy and are not always reliable indicators of fetal death. If you feel that your pregnancy symptoms have disappeared or changed significantly, do not panic. Contact your doctor or midwife and let them know. They may perform a blood test to measure your HCG levels and an ultrasound to check your baby's heartbeat and activity. How to prevent stillbirth. While some causes of stillbirth are unavoidable, there are some things you can do to reduce the risk and have a healthy pregnancy and delivery. These include 1. Getting regular prenatal care. Visit your doctor or midwife regularly and follow their advice and recommendations. They can monitor your health and your baby's health and detect and treat any problems early. 2. Taking prenatal vitamins. Take a daily prenatal vitamin that contains folic acid, iron, calcium, and other essential nutrients for you and your baby. This can help prevent birth defects and complications. 3. Eating a balanced diet. Eat a variety of foods that provide you with enough calories, protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, and minerals. Avoid foods that are high in mercury, such as certain types of fish, or that may contain harmful bacteria, such as raw meat, eggs, or dairy products. Drink plenty of water and fluids to stay hydrated and avoid dehydration. 4. Avoiding smoking, alcohol, and drugs. Smoking, drinking alcohol, or using drugs can harm your baby's growth and development and increase the risk of stillbirth and other complications. Quit or cut down on these habits as soon as possible and seek help if you need it. 5. Staying active. Exercise regularly and moderately unless your doctor or midwife advises you otherwise. Physical activity can improve your blood circulation, strengthen your muscles, relieve stress, and prepare your body for labor and delivery. Aim for at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise, such as walking, swimming, or yoga, most days of the week. 6. Sleeping on your side. Sleeping on your back can compress the blood vessels that supply oxygen and nutrients to your baby and increase the risk of stillbirth. Sleeping on your side, especially your left side, can improve the blood flow to your baby and reduce the risk of stillbirth. Use pillows to support your back, belly, and legs and make yourself comfortable. 7. Managing stress. Stress can affect your physical and mental health and your baby's health. It can also trigger preterm labor and delivery. Try to avoid or cope with the sources of stress in your life, such as work, family, or finances. Seek support from your partner, family, friends, or a counselor. Practice relaxation techniques, such as breathing, meditation, or massage. Do something that makes you happy, such as reading, listening to music, or watching a movie. Stillbirth is a devastating and traumatic event that can affect anyone. It is important to know the signs of fetal death in the womb and how to prevent it. If you have any concerns or questions about your pregnancy, do not hesitate to contact your doctor or midwife. They are there to help you and your baby and to ensure a safe and healthy outcome. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it helpful and informative. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos on pregnancy and parenting. See you next time.